Good morning. Pastor Sean here, uh, and this is your morning prayer for Wednesday, October 13th. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O come, let us worship him. All right, today we've got Matthew 12, verses 22 through 37. Then a demon-oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him, so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder the, his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on a day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right, that time of year, the uh, the unforgivable sin always comes up. Um, honestly, I, I, I enjoy, um, out of this text, um, verse uh, 29, honestly, because it's a lot more fun. Uh, how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. And um, a lot of people are very confused by that because, you know, this, this idea of, of somebody entering into a, somebody's house and plundering, um, and he's talking about Satan and, and before this, so we get this idea that Satan is the one who comes in and plunders or something like that. But the, the fun thing is that in the whole context of what he's talking about, is that um, that Jesus, you know, when you read this, Jesus is the one who binds the strong man. He is the stronger man. Um, so he enters Satan's house. <laughs> um, Jesus comes in, enters Satan's house to plunder his goods, which is basically you and me. You know, when, 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 before we are, you know, before we've come to faith, uh, that, that we, we are, we're baptized and, and brought into faith, uh, we are property of Satan. You know, he, he, he has us. We are in his house. So Satan comes in to plunder his goods, us, um, and, but he first binds the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. So you get the, it's just a great picture of, of, of Jesus coming into Satan's house and, and just like wrestling him to the ground, hog tying him, <laughs> tying him up. And then, you know, we're, we're just sitting there in the corner like, okay. And Jesus is like, all right, come with me. And he, and he leads us out. Um, and I just, that's a, that's just a fun illustration. <laughs> it's just a great picture. So that's that's what I gravitate towards. Gravitate towards. Um, plus, because it, it just it's such a different picture of Jesus than we usually get. You know, usually it's like oh, the meek and mild Jesus, and very gentle, very you know whatever. Um, but here, Jesus you know knocks in the door, uh, you know, 
kicks it down and then comes in, beats up Satan, ties him up, and then plunders. He you know, basically loots the house and takes all of the spoils, which is which is us. And and this is like you know we are the treasure, you know we are the treasure that Jesus wants to come in and take. Um, it's a very kind of uplifting text. Um, not to mention just a fun picture. So there's that. That's what I would focus on, honestly. But of course, there's this um, th- this thing here that we we can't possibly let go, which is um, every every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven, but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. Okay. So uh, people kind of just sort of take that as people do, just take it right out of the context. And so now we have a, a concept of this unforgivable sin, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, once you take it out of the context and you just have this idea of this blaspheming the Holy Spirit being unforgivable, well, now you can do whatever you want with it. You can define it however you want. You can take other verses out of context, put them together to support whatever you want to say about it. That's the great thing about taking things out of context. You can have it say whatever you want. But if you look at it in context, which again, perfect thing to do, always a good thing, is that Jesus is talking, you know, the, the point is there's these, um, the, uh, the Pharisees are basically telling, saying like, you are in league with Satan. You are doing Satan's work. Okay. Okay. Um, this is basically what they're, they, the accusations they're lodging. So in, in this context, and Jesus is giving them an illustration of him and Satan and what happens with this and how he can't possibly be casting out uh, demons um, by the power of demons because then the, they're going against each other and it, the, the kingdom has collapsed. It just can't be. So he's got to be doing it by the word of God. Um, so every sin and blasphemy will forgiven people. So all the, all the sins, you know, the sins of the world will be forgiven except the blasphemy against the spirit, which in this context is basically looking at the things of God and saying that is the work of the devil. So looking at what Jesus is doing and saying to you, Jesus are, are, are doing the work of the devil. Okay. So basically rejecting Christ is the unforgivable sin will not be forgiven, which makes perfect sense. Not in that like, okay, so if you reject Christ, you can, you can never be forgiven. But when you are rejecting Christ, that is a sin that, that, (laughs) okay. So Jesus dies for the sins of the world, right? Every sin is forgiven. So he pours out forgiveness on all things. Okay. On everybody. Okay. Now here's you who you are rejecting Christ. You are currently in rejection of him. So what happens is this uh, grace, this mercy comes pouring down upon you and you've just got an umbrella. Okay. So all of it's just coming right up. It's, it's not falling on you at all. You're, you're, you're shielding yourself from it. So can you be forgiven? No, absolutely not. Why? Because you are actively rejecting that forgiveness. Okay. It's not a matter of your sin. Your rejection of Christ is so strong and so amazing that he can't forgive it. Of course, he can forgive. He can forgive all sins. Absolutely. However, you can reject that forgiveness. And it's when you are living in rejection of that, you cannot be forgiven. Okay. And so a person who has, you know, they, they're baptized, grew up in the faith. They fell away. They were, they turned against Christ, rejected him, lived as, you know, as, as a non-believer. And then one day, the spirit convicts them. They repent. They 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 ask for forgiveness, and and you know they come to church. They ask for forgiveness. I say you are forgiven. Their sins are forgiven. You know why? Because they're not actively rejecting it anymore. It's not like the forgiveness wasn't there. It's just they were for, for uh, rejecting it, forgetting for, or forsaking it. That's that's what I'm thinking of. Um, so, and that's why, like, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. So, you know, any any speaking and, and saying, like, oh, whatever, you know, okay, you're speaking against him as a person, whatever, I, 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 your sins are forgiven, you're not rejecting me, you're just not understanding me, okay? But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. So, I mean, it's, it's just a fancy way of saying, if you reject forgiveness, you're not forgiven, that's really all there is to it when you really boil it down. So um, don't get hung up on it too much. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, um, 
don't worry. And and I I. I've had people who, who get very serious about it, and it is serious stuff, but they're very concerned about this passage, and they, they're, they're afraid. Now, like, what if I'm not, you know, what if, what if I'm rejecting Christ's forgiveness now? I mean, does, what, what, I'm, I'm afraid that I'm not, I'm not forgiven. And usually, almost all the time I, I say to them, if you're worried about being forgiven, that you're, you're worried about missing out on this, then you're probably not rejecting it <laughs> because if you reject the grace of Christ, you're not concerned about it. You, you don't think there's anything to worry about. You don't think there's anything to be forgiven. So it doesn't even register for you. So if you're concerned, cool, <laughs> you're, you're in a good place. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a, a fancy way of saying when, when you reject forgiveness, you are not forgiven. It's, it's really not, that uh that complex so there you go let us pray oh lord our heavenly father almighty and everlasting god you safely brought us to the beginning of this day defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through your son jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever Amen. Now, taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, hope you have a great Wednesday, and uh, hope your week is going well. And we'll be back to a somewhat regular uh it's not really a live morning prayer but it's pretty close so we'll be back to kind of our our regular routine tomorrow so thanks for bearing with me these last few days uh, until tomorrow peace be with you